Hey there, welcome to another play guide and review for the PS2. And this one is a rare game, it's not one that you'll find in the discount shops. It's the History Channel Great Battles of Rome, developed and published by Slytherin Software in 2007 for the PC and the PS2, and it also got a release on the PSP as well. The game begins with lots of cutscenes and action from the History Channel, and anybody who's seen the History Channel will be familiar with this type of presentation. I am Marcus Aurelius, Emperor of all that lies before me. I rule over lands I have not seen, over peoples whose languages I do not speak. I rule over Rome, and Rome is the center of the world. But Rome was once a small town in a hostile age. Tribes warred between themselves, and nations vied for land. The earth was no stranger to the blood of men. And yes, we can skip these cutscenes simply by pressing the X button, which is great, but it's sometimes great to watch those for an introduction. And after we press the start button, we can choose from a number of options, including the options at the very bottom of the screen, which basically means we can disable the autosave, change the volume and the difficulty. And for this, I'm going to be playing on the medium difficulty. And you can select, of course, the hard if you want to make that even harder. There aren't too many options in this game, so also check out those videos that we've managed to unlock and the credits of the game as well and I won't be bothering to do that on this particular playthrough. The game will automatically save to our memory card and we can just play as a quick skirmish or we can play the full campaign. So let's check out the full campaign, we can play as the Romans or the Celtics and the Celtics are locked until you've completed the Roman campaign which is pretty darn long. At the beginning, it will give us a few tool tips and guides to help us navigate around the game. Basically, an information guide as to what's going on. So, let's overlay over the top of those a few pointers. And we can see stamina, attack, power and defense. And also, our cash available is 50. Denari and reputation is 0. You can see we can also heal on upgrade and buy things for our units as well and our units experience and battle level will be represented on that screen. At the beginning of the game we weren't given very much at all, we are given 4 units and you can change the colour you can see of those units from purple to red and you can see of the four we have some light infantry and some skirmishers and also some light cavalry as well and so let's check out the very first mission in the game and let's see how hard that would be what is rome rome is a name a city an empire Rome is history. Listen then, and I shall tell you more. Our very first mission is Defiant Farmers, and we are still uniting the territories in Italy at this point. This is very early on in the development of Rome, and this is perhaps at the beginning of the Roman Empire when we are simply taking on the local adversaries and we haven't quite built an empire just yet. At the beginning you can see if we move our left analog stick around we can place our units around on the map and it's important to place those units in an appropriate position for the enemy as we shall see later on. You can see the battle aim in this case is to kill 50 of the enemy and you can see various options as well by moving around that D-pad we can change various options on the screen you can see that we have our leader at light infantry, skirmishes and cavalry to select from and we can give those various options 
and abilities and formations as well. L1 and R1 to swap between our units on the battlefield and if we press the triangle button that will highlight the path of those and if we press X we can maneuver our guys around the battlefield. You can see in free look like this we can look at the battlefield from any angle that we like and observe our four units that we've got available. And so let's take control by pressing the X button of the cavalry and you can see the cavalry is fairly quick and we can run those towards the enemy and having done so we can march them straight in and if there are any red crosses which appear on the screen it means our guys are getting defeated and if there are any light blue crosses it means the enemy in this case are being defeated so having control of this cavalry what I'm going to do is to run behind the enemy and stampede them. If you see any horseshoes, that means we've stampeded them and trampled on them. And so you can see our javelin throwers are throwing javelins into the enemy, our horses are hacking them from behind, and our first light infantry is chopping them up from the head of the unit. So that's it, that's mission one, that's game over. And that was a quick introductory battle. At the end of that it gives us some stats, we killed 50 people, we only lost one of our guys, we got lots of fame, but not much money for doing that. Part of the game is definitely wading through this sequence of upgrading our units and checking them out, and you can see a little bit later on we've now got 15 units, some heavy infantry there, you can see the stats as well are much higher. More heavy infantry, heavy cavalry, heavy infantry, light cavalry, and you can see that I'm increasing the number of diversity of units so that it gives us a better increased chance in the battle. And very heavy cavalry at the end. Using the options you can see on the right side of the screen, we can upgrade our units as well. And we can also heal them, which is definitely important, as we shall see later on. Let's employ the healing technique so that everybody is at full strength before we go on to the next level. And checking out the upgrades, and there are lots of upgrades that we can choose. And these are handed out if our units survive a battle, if they go into a skirmish, take on the enemy and survive without any damage whatsoever, i.e. losing one guy, it means that we will get a bonus feature, and these bonuses can really rack up if you leave those to pile up for a number of levels. You can see we've upgraded this guy, advanced block and advanced dodge and endurance as well, which is critical. And you will see the health after this has definitely gone up thanks to that advanced endurance. And you can see many other things that we can upgrade thanks to the bonus points that are given out after the battle. And standing firm can help if you're dealing with cavalry and anti-cavalry and anti-infantry specialist. And we can also get protection from cavalry and infantry as well. One of the hardest things is to choose how to use our credits wisely and in this case well I'm going for protection from infantry which definitely helps and using up more credits we can have junior NCOs which means they don't leg it from a fight very quick but at the beginning I like to increase the block and the dodge because that increases their armor and agility and it means they don't get hit in the first place. Not getting hit in the first place is the number one thing in this game. You don't want to get hit. And if you are hit, you better make sure that that armor level is better than the 11 that we've got this guy on at the moment. Let's increase the endurance and then they'll fight for longer. And it's best to have at least 50 endurance or health as it may be in this game. So let's go for the expert endurance and 
Let's see what else we can have. Advanced Swordsman, Missile Protection, Armor Penetration, and as we select these, it will unlock a tree of different ones. So these aren't the entire list that you can see at the moment. There will be a tree of completely different ones, depending on how we want to customize our guys. And most of the tree isn't actually locked at the moment, unless we diversify our tactics. The basic ones are unlocked this early in the game, and there are at least 100 missions in the game, of which I've played through the first 40, of which I'll be showing you maybe 5 or 6 in this playthrough. You can see that's unlocked parry, and parry is another defensive manoeuvre, bonus chance to hit somebody and bonus chance to avoid them, and parry is a special manoeuvre if you go for that kind of thing, and so that won't always be available, that's simply available through to the path that I've chose to unlock the items. So you can see the upgrade definitely comes in handy if you can accumulate that over a few levels. It means we can customise our guys and specifically master them so that they take on infantry or cavalry. And you can have a protection of both and master elephants as well a little bit later on. You'll be relieved to hear that we won't be going through most of the upgrades from now on. This is basically it. So before we get into the next battle, let's just finish off upgrading all our guys. And the advanced leadership is definitely helpful for our leader because that means they'll fight more readily as long as they're within our leadership radius. And that has to be as big as possible. We can also select faint and advanced faint and all kinds of different things, most of which I'm just playing around with because I'm reloading this from a save state, so this isn't my actual play, these are just saves that I made along the way. Let's check out that expert leadership and let's see what difference that makes. We can also press the square button and recruit some guys at this point. And because this is maybe 20% of the way through the game, we're not going to get very much at this stage. Some Velites, which are more skirmishers, and some Spearmen, which are more skirmishers. Most of these guys will throw spears at this point. And Hastati, which are heavy infantry, and they throw Javelins. And that's pretty good. We've also got Scouts, which are the light cavalry, or the Nobles, which are the medium cavalry and the principles which are the heavy infantry and we can also see triari which are old veteran infantry but we haven't got any decent cavalry or any decent infantry right now so i'm saving up my money though the sun knights had been vanquished the gallic menace smoldered still hostilities would soon be rekindled of that there was no doubt Oh yes, and then there were the Greeks. Entering another battle, this is the Siege of Aretium, and this is again early in Roman development. We're still fighting the Gauls, and the Gauls, I think, have already sacked Rome by now, and we're trying to defend our land against the Gaulish fanatics, who will fight naked and throw themselves towards us naked into that battlefield. So the second longest scenario that it takes to develop in the game is this one. So let's just skip it for now and let's just check out the battlefield without setting up any of our units. After pausing for a few seconds, our units will step forward and they will step forward very slowly we can press the square button to make those advance very quickly and attack or we can press the circle button in order to make those slow down and act as a defense. Our leader isn't very good at chopping down heads but he will encourage the others to fight for us so it's best if he's marching very much closer to the battle. You can see sometimes the battle is obscured by the trees that isn't very helpful 
but ordinarily you can see some detail is here on the PS2 version. Let's attack the enemy and that means all of our divisions will now run forward at full speed and collide into the enemy. see lots of blues and light blues make sure that we are killing them and only a few reds at this point. Once one of our units has completely demolished the enemy it will then spread out and stand around doing nothing and so you will have to take control of that and throw all that back into the battle if you want to use it. If not, you better just leave it because if they get a scratch they won't get a bonus point which adds to the upgrades. So if they have got a scratch it's best to send them in and if they haven't you can just let them stand around the battlefield. Again it depends what units you're fighting against and in this case I'm sending in my heavy cavalry and from this vantage point you can see that I can control that heavy cavalry what I'm going to do is to run them directly into the skirmishers, throwing those arrows and javelins towards us. By running around in a circle, those skirmishers will eventually panic in fear and give up and run away, and that's our cue to run on to the second skirmishers, which are again throwing javelins, and look at that, we are taking a pounding now by the enemy cavalry, so let's send in some of our heavy cavalry as well, at least the medium sort to try and back those up and by pressing the triangle we can follow that heavy cavalry as well as direct them so let's pile them straight into the enemy and hopefully now we can get a few more blue crosses and you can see the time is ticking down we have to defeat the enemy before the time runs out and at the moment we are severely getting damaged we're down to one major ground force and one cavalry and our leader is alive as well. We're down to almost the last minute and it won't be long before we die at this point and it's very easy sometimes to wade into the action too quickly and simply die from not setting up your units in the first place. away which means that we now have 30 seconds to dispatch the last of the stragglers unfortunately I ran out of men so I'm gonna have to retreat and try that level all over again we have been defeated and when we are defeated unfortunately we won't get any score of fame and money for doing that but we won't take any damage either, we won't have to heal our guys so we can get straight back into the action without going through any upgrades or any healing we can just get straight back into the fray and try that again and it will memorise our previous formation as well so we don't have to set that up all over again moving forward in time we've now got 14 units of which some of those have been upgraded The Heavy Cavalry has now got 22 armour, which is a minimum standard. This one's got 18 and this one's got 28. And the Legionnaire there is one of the better units that you can buy in the game. And you can see in red at the top, Legionnaire. He's pretty expensive at 800, but it is possible to buy those quite early on and to start loading them out. And you can see what upgrades that we've bought those already and the armor the standard and the weapons are actually ones that we bought them with money yes you can actually spend money on guys so let's see what we can afford weapons grade 3 helmet grade 1 and extra ammo for lobbing shots at the enemy and the standard gives them more morale so it means they're more fierce in battle so let's buy this unit some more and yes you can buy all the units some heavy armor and some heavy equipment Carthage. Once that name meant power. 
Once, that name meant Hannibal. Hannibal, yes. A man whose great genius was matched only by his hatred for Rome. And though Rome had no desire to fight, Hannibal craved war. Truly, he was a leader of men. At his command, an army and their elephants marched across the Alps. Here began the Second Punic War. The victor would decide the course of history. Skipping forward in time, we arrive in the middle of the Second Punic War. This is the Battle of Trebia. And unfortunately, some of these stats and information aren't particularly accurate. And as we shall move on to a bit later on, some of these facts are absolutely misleading to the point of being false. But it's always good to read the story anyway. And in this case, this is the Battle of Trebia, and we aren't facing Hannibal, we're facing his vanguard, the back of his cavalry. And so all we need to do in this case is to clear up this small party, and hopefully until reinforcements arrive. Let's just speed up that footage so that we can take care of the battle placement. What I like to do is to match cavalry with cavalry, infantry with infantry, and sometimes I like to put my light infantry at the head of the party and put those in defensive mode so they have a nice strong wide defensive path, and then the heavy guards I like to put in a block in attack formation. You can see the heavy guards are actually on the left here behind that cover and the cavalry is on the right so setting up those guys into different patterns and clicking on the middle button to select when we are ready to attack we're actually happy now with that placement we can Move those guys around, or legend can take any amount of time to fine tune our battle plan. And if we get that right, we can simply launch the battle and it will take care of itself. If we get that slightly wrong, we can move units around within the battle. And if we get that absolutely and completely wrong, then it's time to reorder our battle plan from scratch. Hannibal has some elephants, and those elephants may be a major problem to our army. And so let's walk forward very slowly. You can see I'm pausing my cavalry at the moment until I choose to attack. And walking forwards very slowly means that the enemy don't score too many hits. I need to score 150 at this point. So let's start now to send out the cavalry and try to get those elephants. If a unit is within a square of the enemy, we'll automatically lock on to them and attack. But if they aren't within a square of the enemy, they can just stand around doing nothing. So sometimes you have to guide them all the way there, and sometimes you can just let the path roll itself, and they will get all the way there. And you can see our heavy legions now are moving along the left flank. They are now emerging from the woods, so that means they should turn towards the enemy and fight the enemy. Sometimes they will only do that once we give the order to attack. But you can see they are doing that, and it means that we can now outflank the enemy just as they rush into the middle of it. We can now rush in from the side with our heaviest units and crush them. You see the elephants are making mincemeat of most of our cavalry, but it's looking like with the armor and the arrows that we're lobbing into those guys, which make a huge difference, those flanked regions are definitely getting a pounding thanks to our units. You can see one of our units is running away into the corner but we should have enough available at this stage to take on the enemy. The enemy 
commander is being surrounded by her best units. And it's time to get rid of those last archers. We only need 36, 35 enemy to beat them. We don't have to take down the commander, but if he gets knocked out, the rest will usually give up, particularly at this early stage. And even though we are getting massacred, we just need one more guy. There you go. We've won that battle. That will get some fame, but more importantly, some cash. And also some upgrades as well. You can see we are healing the guys in between the battles. And let's just fast forward through the upgrades. Because what you have to do is select every guy individually. And check to see if any of them have any free upgrades available. Some will, some won't. And it takes five minutes to get through them all. And to choose which upgrades that we want at this stage. Buying them upgrades is definitely important and you will have to ration your cash for the best army later on and the biggest upgrades. But here we go, we're going to move on to the Battle of Canny, where it says we are still fighting Hannibal but we are not fighting directly, this is another flanking manoeuvre. And so Hannibal's got all of his cavalry all over to that left side so let's do that. And our first two cavalry units are anti-cavalry specialists. And our second two black cavalry are anti-infantry specialists. So we can specialise those, send those in. Of course the anti-infantry ones are better for trampling down those skirmishers. And then we have these guys with the shields. They're great for skirmishing and defend, defensive movers. And with the red shields, they are our medium fighters. And the white shields at the end, they are our heavy legionaries. So let's pile those up and let's try to take on the enemy in this formation. One of the first things I like to do is to change the camera angle so we can actually see things and we can see things from our point of view or the enemy's point of view or from the point of view of one of our riders. Let's just see how our riders make do with these enemies and as long as we see those light blue crosses that means it's great we take them on and if we don't it means our units will be slaughtered, so at this stage let's just walk forward very slowly and concentrate our firepower on the cavalry. You can see our main army hasn't even attempted to take on the others yet, and we don't have a time limit, all we need to do is to demolish 220 of that enemy. And the enemy is putting up a massive fight because they've got medium cavalry, and our medium cavalry has now run from the battlefield. When you can see red on the bottom of the screen, that means they've taken enough damage and punishment, and their health is depleted. If you have more stamina, then that means they won't run away. If you give them junior NCO status, they won't run away. And if you increase their standard, they won't run away either. Alone, the standard is to kill everybody, and on the right flank, everybody's managing to do that. And on the left, we've managed to break even to the point where we now have the upper hand in this battle. It's annoying when we do have a time limit, but when we don't, we can take all the time in the world to manoeuvre our forces around one at a time. And that might seem odd, but in real battle, you can't just say, all right, force one, do this, force two, do that, force three, do this, force four, do that. In the real Roman Empire, you had drums and you had horns, and you could say right flank move forward, left flank pull back, all attack, all withdraw, and that's basically about it. So even though this control method is finicky and annoying to say the least, the restrictive nature of moving every single unit in individually is actually closer to real battles than the PC version when you can just drag and drop units around the battlefield at your leisure like a command and conquer game and to my mind this command and conquer scenario kind of spoils this game because it's too easy to outwit the nitwit enemy and to outflank those and to drive those around 
If you can only command one unit individually, it means your hands are tired and full trying to negotiate around the battlefield, and enemy can be confused, and our guys can be confused as well. So let's move on to another battle. This is in Spain, but never mind the trivia. It would have been great if this was in conjunction with the History Channel and an encyclopedia of Roman trivia from that time. Unfortunately, it isn't, and a lot of the information is completely wrong, but it does give you the impetus to look up the real facts and the real information for yourself. And they missed a trick there if this was an on, well, an offline encyclopedia. This game could have been immense, and civilization managed to pull that off many years before. So they definitely blundered their way as far as the facts and the figures, and I think this game was developed outside of the History Channel, and they basically stamped the History Channel into it at the last minute. If it wasn't for that, this would have been an excellent game to delve into history, and to expand our knowledge of history, but there are too many misleading facts and figures, and to be honest, it's so misleading, it's a disaster when it comes to the history, so the instruction panels are only an introduction as to what went on. Spain, we don't have a purple sky, but we do in this game, and we don't have too much weather in this game either, but we do have bogs and different landscapes as we shall see a bit later. For now, we have stony ground, and as long as our troops have boots, they can negotiate the stony ground, and if they don't, they'll fall over flat on their backs. So you better make sure they have the upgrades as we go into uncertain territory, and you can see lots of enemy deaths at this point. Our side of the control system is definitely having to move through every single one of our units to get to where we need to go, and luckily get used to looking at the shields, and moving through to the black shields, we know those are horses, and the red shields are our heavy legionaries. see not many people in this force at the moment, that's because they've died and we didn't heal them. After the last battle, if you don't heal the units, then they won't recover, and so you can only take in the ones remaining from the last battle, and they may be battle-hardened or they may be weakened from the previous battle, depending on the experience and things like that. At the end of the battle, the initial skirmishes will stand around doing nothing, so the battlefield is free at this point for us to select some units and send those in. You can see there's no time limit, and sometimes we have to preserve our leader in order to complete the battle. Sometimes we need to preserve our units by a certain amount. Sometimes we need to beat a time limit. Sometimes we need to destroy the enemy leader and things like that, but in this case the best battles are the ones with no aims and we can simply march in at our own speed. Look at that, they're trying to get a pincer manoeuvre in, so let's close off the pincer manoeuvre with our troops and as soon as they appear they will run in to those guys and on the other side of the battlefield we've also got some more enemy and so you should see at this point the last of our units colliding with that enemy. So even though they move fairly slowly, the cavalry is great because they can wade through things and break apart skirmishes, and even if you choose the path option with the cavalry, 
then they can sometimes wander around in a circle and demolish other cavalry as well. And if you get trample and advanced trample, expert trample, they can simply trample the enemy without losing a single one. So it depends how you upgrade these guys, and I tend to go for raw armor above everything else, and then they will survive the battle and not run away. And having done that, then the second thing is to give them some more endurance, and then after that, the dodge and block, and try to get the defense as high as possible, and then after that, protection against cavalry and infantry. Swordsman is very helpful as well, and then after that, you can buy them the armor and all the little bits that they need. At this stage, I haven't bought anything for any of this light infantry. I haven't wasted any money on anybody except for the heavies, and they will pay for themselves later on. You won! Well done! You've killed 311. You've only got 67 casualties. And skipping forward in time, we've reached 209 BC. According to this, this is the Battle of Ilipa. And even though the dates are wrong and everything else is wrong, it says Hastrubal Barker, Hannibal's brother, is in this fight. No, he wasn't. Hastrubal was in the fight, but it wasn't Hastrubal Barker. And the fight actually took place three years after it said it did on the introduction screen. See, with the time limit, I'm rushing my troops forwards, and again, we forgot to heal them, so that means this force over to the far left, which is a distraction force, is very much undernumbered. Even though they are outnumbered and outguns, we will see springing forth the enemy, and that is just enough to distract the enemy. You can see two or three legions and are piled around our distraction force and the main elephants in the middle of the battlefield which would have trampled our units are now slowly moseying their way towards the diversion which is fantastic it means our units can now clash with the other units the enemy and even though our leader has pegged it we can now clash with the enemy and start to make ground before those elephants turn round and run the way back again. Before that happens, it's always best to try to wedge your units in between the enemy as they approach and then they don't link up with other enemy and that means the morale goes down and divide and rule, just divide them up, split them off and as soon as one lot pegs it, get another set of guys in as quickly as possible. You can see the trees in the background are very low resolution, and the very low resolution trees means that the graphics are 10 years dated, or at least it seems that way. The actual graphics are pretty good, and everything works pretty good, it's just that the trees let everything down. So the graphics would have been PS2 quality if the trees had been top notch. Because they aren't, it looks like a 16-bit game. And so that lets it down. And the slow manoeuvring of our plodding our way through the selection process can slow this game down as well. So half of the battle is selecting our formation before we even set off. And that distraction for us has meant, hopefully, that we have enough time to get rid of the last of these units. This game mostly got negative reviews when it came out, and of course on the PlayStation 2 it's not as easy to control as the PC version, and it can get pretty unwieldy when you have to go through every single unit and upgrade them, and then every single unit to place them, and then virtually every single unit to control them individually on that battlefield. 
but I like the foibles of this game. I think the limits are sometimes its strengths, and that means that you have to concentrate harder on your formations in the first place. And you can't just spend the money anywhere you like. You have to put those into the heaviest units and then sacrifice the lighter ones a bit later on. And so it's definitely a game where you have to think in advance and save cash and save reputation for when you need it for the harder battles. And I like to save maybe 800 cash between battles and then I can spend that on armor and also weapons if I really need to do that. Sometimes observing units in the field, we can see exactly which units are getting destroyed and which ones are surviving. And the ones that are getting destroyed, we can either sell those or upgrade them so that they don't get destroyed in the future. You see our leader is on 118 health at the moment, or whatever that may be. And healing, yes, let's just heal everybody so that now all of our units are now back together and full strength and full morale. Unfortunately, there isn't much morality in this game. You have to wade through murder the enemy, and there is no buildings to build, and there's no sim cities to sim city. There's no roads to manufacture or anything like that. It's simply waded in with our armies, skirmishes, set up the battle, and every battle takes between five and ten minutes, which is fine. At Victoria. I always so even though this is a rare game, I'd say it's almost a gem. I really enjoy it and I've been playing it for weeks. And you can see the circle on the bottom it means we can check out the terrain. You can see some bogs and some rivers and some trees which will slow us down. And by pressing the circle again, we can actually flick through the enemy. And so you can see the enemy level 15 heavy infantry, level 16 leader, level 18 light infantry, level 20. And that gives us an idea of what we're going to be facing. And at the moment, we are maybe up to level 18 on our side, maybe level 15. So it means we can match enemy for enemy and hopefully put the stronger ones against the weaker ones so they'll survive and get into more strong ones. Because if one unit takes on two enemies, that's better than one weak unit getting demolished at the hands of two enemies or one weak unit getting demolished in the first place. So let's check out that terrain again. And it's great that we can reverse the tables. And it reminds me of a board game where we can check out the reverse tables like Stratego and check out the enemy and check out their weaknesses. So let's check out this battle again. We're allowed 100 casualties and we have to do it all in around three minutes. Otherwise, it's game over, and it takes hours of my life playing this every day and coming back and defeating more guys. It's a tremendous feeling at the end of every battle when it says, you won! And I really do love that tremendous feeling after all this, and I don't really tend to enjoy these types of games. See people bog down in the water, and they will eventually climb over those rocks and get out of the water, they're only in there because they're throwing javelins and that hampers them to be throwing them in the first place. So I think this game is a mixed bag. The history could have been immaculate if it was factual and present with the correct dates, but it isn't. The clips, almost an hour of clips from the History Channel, you can't really go wrong with those. The graphics would have been great if it wasn't for the tremendously low resolution trees. The battles would have been alright if we could select enemies very quickly and send those in, maybe holding down a button and using a direction on the controller rather than pressing the R1 and R2 buttons to go left and right. And it would have been helpful if we could see which units needed or could be upgraded to save us going all the way through those on that side of the screen. So it's a mixed bag, there is fun to be had and I do love this game, I do think it's a hidden gem 
not that many people will find this, you can't really track it down online, and I had to go through a Russian site to track down the Russian version to find the English con version on another site, so if you're going out looking for this game, you'll have to look very hard to get it. But apart from that, if you do get it, you'll find, well I found, an enjoyable time and hours and hours absorbed playing this game, and it's very easy to quick load this with an emulator and to pile it in there, have a quick skirmish, see how what happened and give yourself a quick pat on the back if everything went alright. And so it's just like a quick driving game, just give it a few loops and quit and next time you might even learn a bit of history as well. Fast forwarding through this battle unfortunately it's very easy to get there within the skin of your teeth within seconds but it's also quite easy if you just rush in and you don't defend people to let everybody just rush in and die so you can see I've advanced quite a bit further than these levels but it is possible to get further and the type of game well if you look up the further games from this company actually developed more of these types of games fairly recently. The Legionary game was released in 2019 and so if you want an update to this game you'll find that on the PC. In the meantime thank you for viewing this Plague Eye review. Thank you.